Ghouls and Ghosts is a game that requires no introduction. Capcom's follow-up to Ghosts and Goblins was a huge success in the arcades, and only helped to further cement our hero Arthur into Capcom's stable of legendary characters. The Genesis port of the game was released early on in the days of Sega's 16-bit powerhouse, and showed gamers that the Genesis was fully capable of recreating the arcade experience at home. It's got amazingly detailed graphics, solid and fast gameplay, and one of the more memorable and well-executed soundtracks of any game in the era. Sure, it's a tough game that's famous for its difficulty, but it always kept the player coming back for more. Ghouls and Ghosts is not only one of the best games on the Sega Genesis, but easily one of the best action-adventure games of all time. Castlevania, as a series back in its earlier days, was known as a Nintendo-centric franchise here in the West. In 1994, Konami released the first and only Castlevania game exclusively for the Sega Genesis, and they pulled no punches. Castlevania Bloodlines was a tremendous game full of incredible video effects and backgrounds, two playable heroes, hordes of detailed bosses, and, in typical Sega Genesis fashion, a little bit of blood and gore, just for good measure. While most of us who were gaming back in the 90s didn't expect the Genesis Castlevania to shock and amaze as much as Super Castlevania 4 did on the Super Nintendo, the game ended up besting it in several circles. Even to this day, a lot of gamers consider Bloodlines to be the best and most underrated Castlevania game of the expansive and classic series. Shinobi has always been a flagship series and character for Sega, especially back in the 80s and 90s. Shadow Dancer was originally released as a sequel to the original Shinobi arcade game, and, like a lot of console ports in the earlier days, the home version was an entirely different but better game. Shadow Dancer played much more like the original Shinobi game than its console sequels, Revenge of Shinobi and Shinobi 3 Return of the Ninja Master. What separated Shadow Dancer from the rest of the games in the series was Joe's ability to use his dog as a partner throughout the game that could distract enemies and grant Joe the ability to strategize his approach. It's a tough game, but a rewarding one. It's got excellent music, fast gameplay, and great graphics throughout. It's a fantastic game that I've always felt was underappreciated and, in my opinion, is the best and truest Shinobi game on the Sega Genesis. You had to know that this one was going to make the list. There's no question, especially among those who've played it, that Musha is without a doubt one of the best Genesis games of all time, as well as one of the best shoot-em-up games ever released. One of the most amazing things about Musha is the sheer ability of the development team. They managed to squeeze so much power out of the Genesis so early on in its lifespan, to a point where, I would imagine, most developers were left scratching their heads. Everything about Musha is excellent, from its varied and colorful backgrounds, its crazy bosses and stage effects, to its screen-filling explosions and phenomenal music score. Musha is the prime example of when everything comes together in a video game. Oh, no! 
It's one of the most sought after titles on the Sega Genesis, and for good reason. It's an incredible game. The late 80s and early 90s were a fantastic era for Capcom. They just seemed to keep hitting home run after home run, and in 1990 knocked one right out of the park with Strider on the Sega Genesis. Strider was the perfect example of how an arcade port should be done on a home console at the time. Everything just felt right. The gameplay, the music, the graphics, it was all there, and it was mind-blowing. The characters were big and detailed, the action was furious and intense, and the game's atmosphere was brought home wonderfully, without Capcom ever missing a step. To me, Strider is the quintessential action game for the Sega Genesis, and one of the all-time greats in the genre. The character of Strider Hear You is just too cool, and the cutscenes in between each stage really help to give the game a bit more personality, and helps to break up the action. Strider is without a doubt my favorite Genesis game of all time, and I still, even to this day, play through the game at least once a month. It's one of those games that always stuck with me ever since I was a kid. It blew my mind back then, and it's still a great game today.